Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode, we are gonna be tidying up a bunch of things on Harry. All right, so now I finally have Harry back on the road. I've driven him a couple of times, uh, short runs, and I am really still concerned about that oil leak. It's, it's dripping oil still onto the, uh, the, the hot exhaust pipe. So I've done a quick couple of runs, come back and seen the oil dripping, and it's just, it's driving me crazy. So uh, the very first thing I need to do is, uh, is sort that out. Um, just looking back, it looks, <laughs> it looks so good. I gave him a wash this morning after all the polishing and stuff we've done, and oh wow, it looks great. <laughs> so uh, I really want to drive it properly without fearing that it's going to burn itself to the ground. So let's get this exhaust out and see if I can fix that oil leak. All right, so you can see here all the uh, oil that's been dripping on the exhaust. So that's not a good idea. That's a, uh, a fire waiting to happen. And it's all coming from this fitting just in here. It's leaking where the crush washer is. I'm pretty sure I use a new washer, but either way, it's not sealing there. So what I want to do is, uh, first of all, let's get this whole exhaust down off of the car and uh, see what we can do about getting into it. That's one way to get it off. Uh, <laughs> all right, exhaust is off. So uh, let's have a look at this leak. All right, so basically what the issue is is there's a crush washer right here on this, uh, where this oil line goes in that is leaking. Now, um, what I plan on doing as I have just changed the oil and uh, it's all fresh, I don't particularly want to drain all the oil to get it out. So this is going to be the messy way you don't do it, <laughs> but I'm going to try and quickly sort of undo the fitting to get the, uh, the washer out and then sort of nip it up again so that it leaks as little oil out as possible, hopefully without losing all of the oil. So that's the plan. I've got my, uh, this is a uh, oil drain uh, catch here anyway, so we'll see how much of a mess I actually make. All right, well that was pretty painless. It managed to uh, undo it and get it off. It looks like basically what's been happening is because this tube runs across the car and it's uh, bolted up on the other side, by um, moving the pipe on the other side has sort of loosened this fitting. There's like a, a small aluminum fitting coming out of the car and then there's like a steel fitting to the tube. The aluminum fitting is tight to the steel fitting and to the tube, but it was loose in its actual connection. So um, now I've tightened that first, then this, then the uh, the big tube. So hopefully it um, it stays that way. At the moment, I think it's fine. It's just when I uh, change the oil again or I have to play with that other tube, that's where there can potentially be some issues. So I'm gonna have to be really careful with that. But it is sorted for now. So um, I think it's time to put that exhaust back on. All right, so the exhaust is all back in and talked up and um, everything's connected up, so all ready to go again. I am going to uh, actually clean this up here and just paint it again. Because it's had all this discoloration from the oil leaks, I want to be able to notice it, even if I can't see it leaking, I'll be able to see this discoloration again from the oil uh, if it does happen. 
which I'm really hoping it doesn't. Um, it would have probably been easier painting it off the car, but it's, it's, I'm just gonna chuck a piece of cardboard behind it and just give it a quick squirt. So we'll, um, yeah, let's see how, the, see how it goes and then we can get it down and give it a test. All right, well, it's a couple of days later. I actually took Harry out for a, a test run out to a cafe about sort of 15 k's away. Did a bit of uh, uh, driving at different speeds. The gearbox sounds great. Cruiser's in fifth, fine. The sound deadening is amazing. I'm actually really impressed. We could sit at sort of 110 k's an hour um, without any dramas uh, talking, having a nice conversation. It was weren't yelling, it was great. Um, there is still one more leak to fix though, and there's other issues that have raised their heads, so uh, let's have a look. Okay, so now with the wheel off, the biggest issue with the drive, this is the back wheel, and look at how much that is scrubbed there. And I only heard it hit a bump a couple of times, but this is the worst part. It has actually bubbled the paint slightly, which is really annoying, but there's nothing much I can do about it except for fix it. All right, well, <laughs> I told you I wanted to uh, try out the car with the old suspension before I changed over so I could feel the difference. And that has gone and bit me in the butt because of that bubble paint is just so frustrating, but there's not much I can do about it. It's not, it's not crazy yet, but there's no way I want to drive it again until I have sorted it out. So uh, Pelican Parts has been fantastic and actually sorted me out with some uh, new Coney struts and all the bushings and everything to replace on this car back to factory spec. So this is actually um, factory for the S model cars. This car is a bit of an odd one because it seems to have all S model uh, features but the VIN number says it's just a base. So I, I don't know, but it's got S brakes, it's got S uh, suspension because the regular ones had Bilsteins, these are Coney's uh, for this. So anyway, uh, I think it's time to sort this all out and um, get in some new suspension parts. All right, well that is a bit of a worry because I've got the old shock out of the car and um, actually physically moving it by hand it's very similar to the new one. The new one's probably a little bit stronger, but this doesn't actually feel like a really worn shock. I mean, often when you get a worn shock, you can move the, uh, move the shock quite easily by hand. This is, this is definitely firmer, but not a lot. And it actually looks like the new shock sits slightly lower and has a slightly smaller bump stop than the old shock. Yeah, so I'm currently worried that this might compress a little bit too much still. I'll swap over this lower ring. Uh, I'll put this onto the new shock just to give it a little bit more height. Um, it's not gonna be a lot, but it's just that little bit extra. And uh, we'll put it back in. They're really easy to change. So if I have to build up new spaces or something like that to give it a little bit more space, it's not a difficult process, so let's uh, change these over now. They're bolt at the top, bolt at the bottom, very easy to change. Let's do it. Rear shocks are really easy to replace, so they're all done. Uh, next to do is the rear sway bar. So this is looking pretty sort of nasty and uh, everything's sort of falling apart on it. The bushings are all gone. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to uh, just try and clean this up a bit now, get the wire wheel out and give it a coat of paint. And then we can put some new bushings and bits and pieces on it and put it back in the car. Okay, well, that sway bar is all nice and cleaned up. So while I'm waiting for it to dry, I'm going to uh, attack the inside of these guards again with some more stone guard. Uh, I'll clean them up and stone guard them so I'll be able to see if they uh, start scrubbing again. Uh, and also, obviously, I want to protect the, uh, the metal because it's worn it back to the bare metal.
All right, now it's time to tackle the front shocks. I've uh, jacked up the hub underneath and I'm gonna undo this uh, top nut. It looks like it's got a bent over washer here, so I'll just uh, tap that down and uh, take this off. Looks like it should be pretty simple. Let's uh, pull them out. Yeah. All right, well that was not what I was expecting and it's made a great big mess. So basically there was no uh, sleeve insert inside this shock housing. It looks like that was the shock housing because when I pulled it apart, um, it's just this was what was inside it and it's full of hydraulic fluid or well, half of it's still in there, half of it's all over the floor. So. Uh, I quickly tested and it looks like the insert does fit in this. So this, I assume, is potentially the original shock and inserts have been designed to go inside this ever since. It's amazing that a car that's almost 50 years old has uh, never had its shocks replaced, but uh, in any case, it definitely needed it. There was absolutely no resistance on this at all, so this, this shock was completely dead. So let's clean up this mess and see if I can get that insert in there and if the insert sits in nicely then I think we're, uh, I think we're looking good. Well the new insert goes in nicely, it's nice and solidly mounted in there. Uh, so it's definitely the right thing, I was worried there for a minute. So uh, now it's time to put it all together, put all the uh, bump stops and stuff back in it and bolt it back up. All right, so I just spent a lot of time then cutting the bushing out of the, uh, the sort of top housing. Um, again, the bushing is very different to the new uh, Kony bushing by the look of things. The new Kony has these two smaller bushings that go either side with a, uh, a tube in between that, so they'll crush together. So anyway, I'm going to give this a quick paint up and get it back in the car. All right, that was really fiddly trying to get the, uh, the hold the shock up high enough and slide the rubber bushings on without pushing the shock back in again to get the nut on with a washer. Took a bit of playing around, but I got it eventually. So finally we have the front shocks done. Took a lot longer than I thought it would. It was just fiddly. Uh, now it's time to go back and put in that rear sway bar. All right, so I'm having fun now trying to fit these uh, new rubber bushes into these end links. Uh, a lot of rubber grease and sort of folding them up and forcing them through. And you can sort of get them in there and then you can slide it back onto the uh, end of the sway bar. So let's do that. I actually jumped on Pelican Parts and they've got an installation uh, right up you can search for these exact parts and a few people have sort of posted underneath how they did it and one of the guys used this sort of method uh, using two pairs of pliers works quite well so um, now apparently these are pretty tricky to actually get to pop onto the balls underneath the car but uh, there's ways around that as well so let's give that a crack
Holy, 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 holy crap. What was that? Okay, so I quickly traced the source of my problem. I pulled out the uh, ignition barrel and the power goes straight back. That light wire goes straight back to the ignition barrel. So I'm going to strip down all these wires now, replace the uh, the nasty one. It looks like it's just the power wire for the stereo. So uh, no major harm done and uh, should be a reasonably quick fix and we'll be back on the road. Well, uh, at least the fact that if something goes wrong with this car, I know every inch of the car uh, makes it much easier to repair it. I managed to go in and uh, tidy up that wiring, took it all the way back to the uh, beginning, replaced it, and uh, thankfully it was only a short stretch. It wasn't too difficult to change, and I've now replaced the uh, connection with a Deutsch connector. There is nothing going anywhere near the steering column. There's nothing in that... Uh, I was lazy back when I installed the uh, the stereo and I just sort of poked the wires uh, underneath this sort of like a, a bit of metal that the shaft travels over the top of and I was chucking wires over there to hold them up out of the way. I definitely need to do something under, about that under there but that's for another day. Let's make sure that the thing actually starts now. But it would start better with the battery connected. We have a running car. Oh, that is so good. Harry is just absolutely amazing to drive now. With that new suspension front and rear, it is just, it is such a difference from when I took it out uh, over the weekend, just uh, sort of going to the coffee shop. With the old shocks in the front, I sort of, when I first drove it, I thought, oh, is this going to be sort of always a bit of a compromise to drive, that it's always a little bit, uncomfortable and just sort of it's okay but it's not really uh up to you know what uh archie is and it's transformed it it is so much better to drive it is just uh it's it's nice and planted uh dare i say it's more comfortable on the back roads than archie the 996 is it is uh it is just it's just so comfortable it's not leaking anymore um i took it for as i said a good 45 minute drive um every all the gauges now work properly oh it is just it's just so good to finally have it driving because i've just been so stressed out about uh lots of little things taking it for a drive because it's i put so much into it i'm so worried that it won't live up to it and and or a break or something's going to happen and now it's actually driving it's it's great even the rear suspension i went over um some pretty rough stuff and it did just touch a couple of times you could see but uh nothing like it was before i went over some big bumps rough roads and uh only on the biggest sort of uh bounce that i get uh, it would uh it, it touched maybe twice over a 45 minute drive so i am pretty happy that is that is a win so if you're enjoying uh, the process and there is still more to come on Harry, I've still got uh, full driving videos to come. I'll, uh, I'll take you out and uh, get, let you see exactly what it looks like on the road and stuff like that. Um, and I've got track days and there's still lots of bits and pieces to, to tidy up on it. So it's not finished yet. So if you like that, uh, please like and subscribe to the videos and uh, join us on Patreon to watch these videos ad free a day earlier than everybody else. And... If you've got any parts that uh, you need to buy for your Porsches, make sure you compare prices at PorschePartsByJeff.com first. All right, guys. See you next time.